Welcome to Sustainable Development Goals in Library Associations, presented by EFLAS Management of Library Associations Section, the New Professional Special Interest Group, the Environment, Sustainability and Library Section, and SULIB, and the EFLA Regional Divisions. The event is the first webinar of a webinar series on the Sustainable Development Goals and Library Associations. My name is Loida Garcia Fibo. I am MLAS Information Coordinator and the moderator of this event. United Nations Development Goals are a call to action to end poverty, protect the planet, and improve the lives and prospects of everyone, everywhere. The 17 goals were adopted by all UN members, including the United States, and are used by countries to guide their development efforts from 2016 to 2030. And I should say, including the United States and Canada, those are the countries uh, represented in IFLA North America. IFLA has advocated for libraries inclusion in the SDGs and development efforts for many years, and in 2014 presented its first program at the United Nations. In North America, library associations have joined these efforts. The United Nations has stated that the world is in the last decade of action to meet SDGs. Libraries are sustainable accelerators. Library associations are key in moving forward the library agenda in each country. MLIS, Management of Library Associations section of EFLAS, mission is to build and support strong library associations collaborating with other EFLA groups in regions of the world. This activity will allow us to support national library associations, highlighting effective strategies that will equip them to help their country to achieve development. Our webinar series, Sustainable Development Goals and Library Associations, follow the EFLA Strategic Direction 1.1 show the power of libraries in achieving the sustainable development goals. A working group from MLAS in collaboration with IFLA new professionals, uh, SIG, ENSULIB, and IFLA regional divisions is coordinating the webinars about various top topics resulting from a survey MLAS carried out during the 2020 to 2021 year. So thank you so much to everyone involved in the coordination of this event and to the MLS chair as well, and each one of the chairs of the various groups. The webinar format includes interactive opportunities to engage attendees in conversations in languages spoken in the regions. We hope everyone joins a breakout section. Uh, we will compile information from those conversations to inform programs at the EFLAS World Library Information Congress in Rotterdam later this summer. So here we have the agenda. First, we have a section with the speakers, then the interactive rooms, and then we close with a speaker's presentations. Please turn off your microphone and camera during presentations. Uh, feel free to ask questions on the chat. Uh, our event will be recorded and you can follow webinar updates on the IFLA list and on MLAS, Facebook and Twitter. Before we continue, I would like to ask Magdalena Gomolka, convener of the New Professionals, to take us into an interactive exercise. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Magdalena and I'm convener of New Professionals. Uh, together with my colleagues from the team, uh, we will support the webinar uh, during the discussions. But first of all, we would like to invite you uh, to write uh, your country. Uh, we prepared a Mentimeter survey. So uh, in the chat, I 
uh, put the uh, link to the Mentimeter. You can click it and write down your uh, your country. Where are you now? And you can also use uh, on in on this presentation slide. Uh, the, you can see the number from the man, uh, from the Mentimeter. So you can put menti.com website and put this uh, this code. Uh, as well as uh, screen this uh, code. So I can share uh, my screen and we can see uh, our countries, uh, but uh, I will give you a few seconds to write uh, down your countries there. Okay, so we are here and Okay, so I hope that you can see my screen. So we have all our countries on the first place uh, is United States. Uh, so welcome everyone. Uh, we have also uh, participants from Canada, from Finland, uh, from Denmark, Chile, uh, Washington DC, uh, Puerto Rico as well. So welcome everyone. It's great that we have so many uh, librarians here in one place, not only from uh, from the USA, from the North America, but also from from Europe, and and it's it's really and to South South America as well. So welcome again, and I give my microphone to Loida. Great, thank you so much, Magdalena. And now I am delighted to present our stellar speakers. We have today, we are, we are really uh, happy to have this uh, set of speakers. They're amazing. And thank you so much um, in advance for um, your presentations today. Julius C. Jefferson, Chair, of IFLA North America Regional Division, Section Head Foreign Affairs, Defense and Trade Section at the Library of Congress and Congressional Research Service. We have Thanos Giannakopoulos, uh, United Nations Chief Information Management Section in uh, United Nations Library from the Outreach Division, Department of Global Communications. We have Rebecca Smith Aldrich, Executive Director, Mid-Hudson Library System, and President of the Sustainable Libraries Initiative. John Shabo, City Librarian of Los Angeles, Chief Executive of the Los Angeles Public Library, a member of the ALA UN Sustainable Development Goals Subcommittee. Robin Keir, Liaison Librarian at the University of Pittsburgh, um, in USA, working with the English Department, the Film Studies Program, and the Gender, Sexuality, and Women's Studies Program, member of the ALA UN SDGs subcommittee. And myself, Loida Garcia Febo, as you know, um, International Library Consultant and Chair of the ALA Sustainable Development Goals subcommittee. Now, without further ado, I would like to welcome Julius C. Jefferson. All right, thank you so much, Loida, and welcome to everyone from all over. It is a pleasure to be here and to see so many of you here um, to talk about a very uh, important issue. Um, certainly want to thank all of those who made it possible um, for this webinar. Um, and and Loida, you know, thank you to you for taking the lead for so much of what we've been doing in the U.S. Uh, over the past few years. Um, Many of you were here today, uh, hear from speakers who will be talking about uh, what we've been doing in the U.S., providing focus, awareness, um, advocacy um, about the uh, Sustainable Development Goals. 
um, through the work we've done with the task force and now the work we're doing with the United Na the uh, subcommittee of the International Relations Committee of the American Library Association. It's the uh, UN SDG uh, subcommittee. And so we are really happy to hear um, some of the things that we're doing there. But as, as the chair of the IFLA North American Regional Division Committee, I want everyone to know that we have been working really di diligently um, putting together and compiling best practices on how we can build advocacy, how we can build awareness and partnerships um, within our region but not just within our region, because we understand that um, when we think about the SDGs and we, we have only a few more years left to reach the goal of 2030, um, this, is, this is about all of us in the world working together. So we are also working with uh, our other regional uh, divisions to, to find best practices, to share what we're doing in our region so we can all come together, um, so we can have a much better world to live in. So again, I want to I want to welcome everyone. I want to thank you for all attending, and I look forward to an outstanding conversation. Thanks, Loida. Thank you so much, Julius. And now let's welcome Thanos Junakopoulos from the UN Library. Hi, thank you very much, Loida. Uh, greetings to everyone. Uh, uh, good morning, uh, good afternoon, and good evening, as we usually say uh, in the UN, to all of you that have joined us today online. I want to thank Loida for this uh, wonderful invitation to talk to you about uh, some of the endeavors of the, of the flagship library of the United Nations, uh, but also uh, to bring into the discussions some of the, of the challenges, perhaps, that we have been uh, identifying around uh, the global library community that the UN Secretariat libraries represent. So the UN libraries uh, is a system of libraries across the duty stations of the United Nations Global Secretariat. And at the same time, uh, we are connected through the libraries of the United Nations systems of organizations. I'll throw some links in so that perhaps this becomes uh, uh, more becomes more clear to everyone. Um, I just wanted to mention uh, a couple of points, a few points on advocacy uh, for the SDGs, monitoring the SDGs implementation, and finally one prototype uh, project that we have uh, started here at the UN headquarters library. So first of all, um, SDGs. I think each of us has to identify, and it's that is the beauty of the SDGs, that it's so far-reaching and in inclusive agenda that we can definitely uh, identify uh, missions locally and several missions of the libraries around the globe at the moment already serve the SDGs and they serve the SDGs very well. I think perhaps uh, our duty might be the narrative to frame the work that we do within the SDGs rather than just go about and uh, Define new activities. There are so many things that the libraries globally have been doing, and the UN Secretariat libraries um, per se since 1946. Um, the, the principle of access to information is a cross cutting issue. It's actually the, the thread that connects all the SDGs. I think I'm, I'm preaching to the choir here if I say that access to information is paramount, but every, every SDG goal, so every sustainable development goal, every indicator every time. What is interesting is um, the outcome of the high level political forum of, uh, of 2018, where it was identified that the connectors, what connects the main targets and uh, indicators of the SDGs, these are crucial social things that the SDGs need to monitor, that we need to uh, be mindful on their implication and access to information is one of those. Um, I believe that as we move on, the, the greatest uh, tool and a great support for, for the implementation of the agenda from the libraries and library associations globally is to tell our communities about the SDGs, to let them um, 
let them know, let them understand the full extent of the UN 2030 agenda, as well as all the processes that relate to it and how this agenda is implemented nationally. I, I remember uh, one of the reports of UNESCO which had identified that 70% of all humans live in countries with very weak science systems. So the knowledge needed for transforming innovation systems around the world, which is extremely important to implement the SDGs, especially at the moment that we are, find ourselves now. So these, these innovation systems and this knowledge that is necessary to transform these innovation systems and also to phase innovation systems out cannot be accessed. Now, this is a serious gap in the global knowledge systems. Um, it was highlighted in the latest UN Open Science Conference by three of the global independent group of 15 scientists that were assigned to the UN Secretary General to produce the Global Sustainable Development Report 2023, that one of the connectors of access to information, and it's actually access to information is part of this connector, is open science. And open science can be a major contributor in closing this knowledge gap and expanding the knowledge that is needed to transform the innovation systems that we need to put forward in order to implement the agenda. Open science has the potential not just to be an accelerator of knowledge and innovation, but through this to be an accelerator of recovery, resilience, and inclusive sustainable development more broadly. And that is exactly what we mean. Um, we at the UN headquarters library uh, saw this quite early. And since 2018, uh, we have been uh, running a global open science conference, uh, always with partners and in particular, um, the Department of Economic and Social Affairs, the Division of Sustainable Development Goals, and UNESCO. In our latest conference, we had over 2,000 people connecting from all around the world to talk about the challenges that we face. Monitoring of the implementation of the agenda is equally important, and libraries can play a really a crucial role here. Um, there, is, there are the voluntary national reviews, and I would like to urge all library associations around the world to report on the work that the libraries are already doing on the ground. At the moment, I see 199 voluntary national reviews in the last three years. I do not see the US in that, but I know there are wonderful things that are happening, especially in the umbrella of open science in the US. So it is really important that we help our partners, we help policymakers monitor the implementation of the SDGs because the implementation of the agenda is actually one of our goals. We are the holders, we are the owners of the agenda. And I think this needs to be made understood throughout all the diverse audiences. Or, excuse me, audiences. Um, another, uh, within the monitoring uh, of the SDGs agenda, I think another important uh, aspect that we can help policymakers and the public is ways to identify what we call SDG washing or greenwashing. I think this is a common term where actually we do not properly report on what uh, a, a company or a, an entity or a public forum and so on are doing in implementing the SDGs. So the idea is to, to align activities to targets, not just talking about generic goals, Allow, align activities to targets and to indicators. The idea would be to measure the outcome, not just the activity. And that, I think, libraries can help in uh, policymakers and other partners around the field, and scientists and researchers, to define what this outcome might be. Because the outcome is to change society. The outcome is to fight injustices on all fronts. Monitor the collaboration in multi-stakeholder partnerships. Do not cherry pick on SDGs to report on. We do not report on just one or two, but rather the full agenda. It's a holistic approach to the agenda and to use transparent, open data for reporting practices. Finally, um, it is important, of course, and um, the latest uh, directive from the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy makes that very clear that publicly funded research should be available to the public immediately. 
And I'm, I'm delighted that uh, this was one of the most equitable measures that I've noticed in the latest directive from uh, the office, the White House Office of Science and Technology Policy. However, putting something online in 2023, just releasing something in a repository, is only the beginning and not actually the goal. So to ensure ineligibility by search engines and machine automation, as well as interoperability with other platforms, the UN Library, together with other partners within the UN and outside the UN, produced an SDG taxonomy. So this could be like a tagging system, if you will, that you could use. It is already available in the six official languages that you could use within your systems to filter your content based on the SDG themes. As we say in the library world, they want the source, the source for the SDG. It, is, it can be the connective tissue of diverse resources, identifying the interlinkages that already exist in your repository, so, or newest content that comes to the repository. I see here that I have only one minute. So um, the SDG taxonomy, which is a series of leaked data services and it's offered by the UN uh, Library, it is available in the six official languages, and it has been approved by the United Nations Center Executive Board for Coordination. Uh, it is available for all to use, to use within or outside the UN systems. So um, I think I will stop here. I will share the links and I'll be happy to um, follow this up uh, through email or questions. And again, my thanks to Loida and my thanks to Ilka for this webinar. Thank you. Thank you so much, Thanos. Um, there is a trend topic here. The SDGs are for all regions, not only for North America, as Julia started saying, and Thanos confirmed uh, with the multilingual resources. Now let's welcome Rebecca Smith Aldrich. Hi, everyone. Thank you, Loida, for the opportunity to speak today. I'm just pulling up my slides here so you can see them. Uh, let's see. There we go. So. Uh, I am uh, going to be an anomaly today because you're not even going to see the sustainable uh, development goals on my slides, and there's a good reason for that. Uh, and that's part of the story here of how associations in the U.S. are building towards uh, contributing to the sustainable development goals. So I got my start at the New York Library Association and being very passionate about sustainability and libraries. And that's what associations are so great for, right? Finding like-minded people and working on things that matter together to make a difference. So uh, from the New York Library Association work that we did and the timing of the work that we did is very notable as they tie to the sustainable development goals. So that's the story that I wanna tell in the time that I have with you here today. Um, in the New York Library Association, we were able Able to get widespread recognition of the importance of sustainability in libraries back in 2014. So it took me about two years to convince the, the Council of the New York Library Association that it shouldn't just be a specialized group thinking about sustainability, that as Thanos said, it, it watches through all of the work that we do in libraries, including how we run our library facilities, how we design services and programs, how we prioritize partnerships. So our approach was thinking much, much bigger than had been and done in the past in our associations. So you can see we started small, we got this resolution passed, we had a committee formed because library folks love committees, and we just started to chip away at what does this look like for libraries? How do we really uh, call people to action, to take action on something that in the United States had had a kind of stuttering start. We had climate change deniers. We have uh, leadership at the national level who might not always respect the United Nations. So we were really trying to figure out in the library community, how do we affect change and action without waiting for national leadership on the topic? We want a grassroots efforts on this work. So we formed something called the Sustainability Initiative, which has evolved over time into a national uh, program called the Sustainable Libraries Initiative. So our association at the state level was an incubator for that work, which was incredibly important to find like-minded people, to find vocabulary that people could relate to, even if they were in more conservative areas of our state, which 
as I noted, timing is everything. Uh, the sustainable development goals were released right as our uh, presidential election came out in an unexpected way and resulted in some national leadership that was not friendly towards the United Nations or the sustainable development goals. So as we really pushed hard in our association to say, we've got to move forward regardless, and we don't want the brand of the SDGs to be a barrier to that work. We had to teach people the language of sustainability, help them understand that it's not just going green, that we're talking about systemic change across institutions and how we treat people and addressing poverty and talking about partnerships across education and municipal work. So that's what we designed the Sustainable Library Initiative to. And I, I welcome you to, to visit some of the resources we've developed over time. And we thank Insulub at IFLA for recognizing uh, through their Green Library Awards Program, the Sustainable Library Certification Program. The roadmap to sustainability has been a, a real key piece for us in educating association members about the language of sustainability. Not everyone comes to this work like we do, those of us on this call who are just passionate, right, about uh, sustainability and climate action. We need a widespread adoption of work in this area. It takes everyone to consider their job to be a climate job, and that is no small task. So shared vocabulary, thinking about what we already do that fits the goals, and then thinking about future action and what it will take to make a difference in those action areas. So from all the lessons we learned, we were translating some of that over into our work in the American Library Association. And I'm happy to share this slide. All of these links are clickable, but this is kind of like a timeline of the history of sustainability at the American Library Association. And you have the benefit of hearing from Loida and Robin later in this event, who are the members of the Sustainable Development Goals Task Force or, or committee now um, at the American Library Association, but we had to like ramp up to that, right? We had to help uh, people in our association understand we have to lead by example. So in our association work, what we've been doing over time is building understanding amongst the governance board and the staff of our association. We've been helping more and more libraries across the association see themselves reflected in this work and to help them find entry points that are doable for them. So instead of presenting all 17 sustainable development goals, we found uh, maybe lower cost entry points for people to understand what it looks like. How do you translate that to a small rural library that wants to be going in the right direction but feels overwhelmed by 17 categories of work? So that's what you'll see built into these steps here. And you can see there was a great group of people back in the 90s devoted to environmentalism in the American Library Association and then like a 10-year gap of no work. And then you see just an acceleration. I love that phrase that Lloyda used uh, as libraries, as sustainability accelerators. But we needed our association to be an accelerated, uh, to lead by example, by making choices internally first so they could be an authentic leader for libraries next. So they issued a task force, um, which I helped to co-chair, which resulted in a report that had 52 recommendations to help lead our libraries forward so they actually would be participating, even though we didn't have national leadership from our government on the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So what you see here is uh, holding our association accountable, how they operate themselves, what they could design that would help libraries be leaders in this topic, and then also helping libraries themselves connect with this work. And this resulted in sustainability being adopted as a core value of the profession for the American Library Association. And this was a real game changer because it got onto the national the stage for everyone to understand the importance of doing work in this area. And the common definition that we chose to use helped broaden people's thinking beyond just going green. This is not just a checklist to go green. We're talking about systemic societal change that needs to consider economics. It needs to consider economic equity, diversity, and inclusion, as well as environmental stewardship. And the nexus of those three things is truly sustainable. So a simpler model, perhaps, than the sustainable development goals, but it's like a starter kit for libraries in the U.S. who are looking to do good work but not quite sure how to get started. So this becomes the framework for a mindset change, because once we teach people how to think differently, they just make better decisions that are going in the directions that the sustainable development goals uh, really inspire and truly intend for all of us to do work in. So I'll just say that at the American Library Association, they have taken this very seriously uh, under the successive leadership of Lloyda, Julius, uh, Jim Neal, each successive president at ALA have taken this to heart. We've uh, really committed to run the association more sustainably, which I think gives the authenticity 
necessary in the field for the folks that are members of the association to really believe in what comes out that is helpful to them to do work in the field on this topic. So from our conferences going carbon neutral to our investment strategy to how we're advocating with the national government for public policy and funding to flow to libraries using the framework of the SDGs as common language, as we now have leadership at the national level that speaks this language, we're now way better positioned to do this work. So I'll just point out that last year we issued a call to action on sustainability to libraries. Um, this is available uh, through this QR code for free. Um, you might be interested in that. If you're looking for examples and ways to talk about this, these, these uh, works really easily slot into the 17 categories, but I think they really talk to action and understanding before we start categorizing the work. That was one of the barriers that we saw was folks just started slotting what they already did into the 17 categories without thinking about the prioritization of what they need to do that's different uh, and where to spend their time most wisely on sustainable development goals. So this is a bit of a translation, I guess, for US library folks. Um, but now the American Library Association is partnering with the Sustainable Libraries Initiative. So for me, my two worlds are coming together, which is pretty cool. Uh, we just launched a sustainable librarianship e-course trying to teach folks from the bottom up how to make better decisions that align with the sustainable development goals, how to really be an active participant in climate mitigation, as well as adaptation, and understanding that those two things have to happen parallel to each other. So absolutely, I think the work of the task force that you're going to hear about later today was really going to augment the work that's been doing here. But this is really focused on embedding this in the association, helping them act with authenticity to build buy-in in the field so that libraries in the field start acting in a widespread manner, not just the one sustainable sustainability roundtable of the American Library Association. We need everyone's help to do work in this area with urgency, given what we are faced. So I'll just say that if you can't tell, I'm really passionate about this topic. So I hope folks connect. I love talking to people about this stuff. I can't can't wait to hear what comes out of the event today. And I just, again, want to thank Loida for the invitation. Uh, and I look forward to connecting with everyone later on. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Um, for those that don't know it, Rebecca has been a true force uh, behind sustainability. Um, and it has been key. Um, her work uh, also together with uh, ALA members in the New York Library Association, where uh, she started all this um, movement, because she mentioned some points that I want to um, emphasize. It takes time, uh, this type of work, um, building the buy-in from the field. Uh, it takes time, but it can be done. And, um, and this point of teaching people the language of sustainability is very important. And so I don't see questions. Let's check the chat one more time. Yes, thank you, Rebecca. And um, I don't see questions, but um, please do connect with sustainable the Sustainable Libraries Initiative and the Sustain Roundtable of ALA. There are many resources there that you can download. Like uh, Rebecca said, they are free. So uh, take advantage of that. Now I would like to uh, welcome Magdalena Gomulka. She's going to uh, guide us with the new professionals through our interactive conversations that are very important. Please, everyone, join a group. Magdalena. Yeah, thank you, Loida. Uh, we uh, prepared for you four rooms uh, to discuss more about this topic. In every room, room um, everyone will have uh, one host, and the host is a member of new professionals. Uh, in the first room, there is Maya, uh, in the second room, Peria, in the third, Borna, and in the fourth, um, I will be there. Uh, so we will have uh, 15 minutes uh, to talk more. You can uh, open uh, your microphones and your cameras uh, there. So uh, give me a few seconds to open four rooms, and uh, you will see the room which you can choose. So. I open all rooms and it takes uh, a few seconds for the Zoom uh, to, uh, to, to open to all of us. So please don't hesitate, just click uh, the, the 
number of the room and and talk more about the topic we will be uh, we will appreciate it okay so if you have any 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 problems please uh you i'm a few seconds with you now until i will go to my room You can see the box where you can, at the end, you can see participants and at the end there are number of the rooms. I see that we are moving. So it we will have uh, 15 minutes to talk more. Uh, I'm sure that will be it will be very nice conversation so don't hesitate uh, to, to go. Okay, so I need to go to my room and I need to leave you here. If you have any problem, please write in the chat box. I will try to, to answer. So hope to see you uh, very soon. Thank you, everyone. We are now back from the interactive rooms when, when they went very fast. So um, I hope that people were able to um, answer the questions on the link. This will be very helpful uh, for IFLA headquarters and also for uh, management of library associations for their event during the um, Congress and uh, other, other communication that it's in development. Now, um, we would like to welcome John Shabo. John's here. Welcome. And um, he is our next speaker. Welcome, John. Thank you so much, Loida. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. Uh, I bring you greetings from the City of Angels, Los Angeles, California today. Um, Magdalena, do you have the presentation? Yes, I share with my screen. Mm -hmm. Well, just to begin, uh, I want to say thank you to uh, IFLA, IFLA leadership uh, and staff uh, for today's webinar and also uh, I really want to thank Loida uh, Garcia Fibo for her leadership around uh, sustainable development goals and uh, tying the work of public libraries uh, to to the UN uh, SDGs. Uh, it is something that I am uh, incredibly enthusiastic about. Uh, I believe there is a, a very real, a natural connection between the work of public libraries and the UN SDGs. Uh, and we um, at LA Public Library created uh, this chart, which is uh, the next slide, uh, that really looks at all 17 of the SDGs uh, and looks to the activities and programs of the library uh, to see what we can, uh, what we are already doing that ties into these goals. And um, I think that that when public libraries of any size look at the SDGs and learn about each of the 17, there's an immediate connection. There's an immediate realization that we are doing very meaningful work in all of these different arenas. And it's, it's actually very exciting to look at uh, the work that we're doing and then to tie it to each of these goals and also to think about <clears throat> how we can use the goals to report out uh, what we're doing uh, use it as an advocacy tool as well, which I'll, I'll speak about in a bit. Um, 
And I want to emphasize that public libraries of any size uh, and in any area, rural libraries, urban libraries, suburban libraries, are, are already doing really important work uh, to address uh, these, these goals. And in fact, some of the best work, I think, is being done by small and rural libraries. So well, while we are a large public library and we have found uh, initiatives that we're doing that uh, that that tie into these goals, uh, and and we have uh, developed programs as well that that uh, connect to these goals as well. Um, again, libraries of all sizes uh, can can make that connection, and it really is a, a, a very natural fit uh, for public library work uh, supporting the sustainable development goals. Our mission is so incredibly broad in serving absolutely everyone in our communities um, and the work that public libraries do around learning and education, um, the work and the way in which it ties to economic development and growth, uh, workforce development activities, uh, public health uh, work uh, that is happening uh, really in incredible ways, beautiful ways all across the globe in libraries, arts and culture, and, and also serving immigrant communities, which I think is very important, and, and you'll see ties into to these goals as well. And so to support the, the, the way this began with our library is uh, to support the American Library Association's uh, Task Force on Sustainable Development Goals and really to draw more attention to uh, the UN SDGs uh, here in Los Angeles and our, and our library and within our library system, but also to uh, draw more attention globally and locally. We, we took the, the UN SDG chart and graphics and sort of created our own um, uh, template here to be able to uh, put the work that we're doing into these 17 goals. And what we found quickly was that we, we could find initiatives that fit under each of these different sustainable development goals. And so today I wanna to just speak briefly about six of these uh, and, and the, the programs that fit up under these goals. And the purpose of that is not to so much talk about those individual initiatives, but to, to help get people thinking about the work that is happening in their own libraries and how it does tie in uh, with the, the SDGs. So the first, um, that you'll see next slide um, is zero hunger is one of the goals and a, a, a program that we have that partners with the local food bank as well as our uh, school district here in Los Angeles to provide free lunch to children during the summer when our schools are, are not in session. Uh, and also uh, not only providing those meals but also providing educational programming and op uh, opportunities for families during that time, as well as information about food subsidy programs um, and also resources to other Angelinos. Another effort uh, that we have found fits uh, under this uh, SDG is uh, a produce, a sort of a produce swap where people bring fresh produce to the library and are able to share it, share it with others. And I know many uh, libraries also have seed libraries, which supports this as well. Uh, and then the next uh, slide speaks to the SDG goal of good health and well-being. Uh, a number of our partnerships with local agencies, government agencies, and organizations are providing uh, Angelinos with free dental uh, and eye exams, eyeglasses, uh, flu vaccines. Uh, we, of course, had um, COVID vaccine clinics in libraries, uh, as well as information about how to get access to health insurance. Uh, and of course, aside from the SDGs, within our own uh, communications channels, we of course talk about the why of doing these and how it, it furthers the library mission. Um, and so uh, that's an example of a good health and well-being. Uh, and then the next is quality education. And of course, a, a relatively straightforward one for libraries. There's so much that, that we do in this space. Uh, we chose to highlight our student success card, which is a special card that we provide automatically to every child in our local schools, uh, as a, rather than waiting for them to come and get a library card um, at the Los Angeles Public Library, and uh, talking about all of the different resources that that opens up for families around uh, education. And then reduced uh, inequalities. Uh, 
that's a fundamental part of what um, what our libraries uh, do, all public libraries. Uh, next slide. Uh, and the, the program that we chose to highlight here was our uh, program, uh, uh, New Americans program, which is uh, helps New Americans, immigrant uh, Angelinos, take their first step on the path to citizenship, citizenship classes, uh, helping them with a variety of immigration issues. Very, very important need in LA, but also very strategically valuable for the library uh, in that uh, we are letting people know uh, about uh, free public library service. And so when they may come to take advantage of our immigration services, our citizenship classes, they also learn about all the other great work that we uh, that we offer and all the other great services that we have. And so um, this is, uh, in, in this program, we also provide tenant and worker rights support as well. And studies show that when people are able to naturalize and become citizens, they're able to participate in, in, uh, in the economy more uh, and there, there are many economic and other benefits uh, to them as well. Um, and then the next slide is uh, on clean water and sanitation. Uh, just as an example, we um, in an environmental initiative are taking out uh, grass lawns and putting in drought resistant landscapes. This is a new one at one of our branches and putting in uh, drip irrigation systems and rain sensors uh, to be able to highlight uh, the being not only a good steward of the, res of the physical plant resources that we have, uh, but also being a model and an example to, to neighborhoods. And then the final one that I wanted to just highlight is around climate action. And uh, we have infused uh, uh, this science, technology, engineering, arts, and math learning in all of our uh, youth programming, but particularly, uh, next slide, uh, we have a, a neighborhood science program where we have people of all ages, but we focus on youth to um, essentially crowdsource environmental data um, uh, around uh, climate, but also around wildlife. Uh, and we provide that uh, to the scientific community uh, through a grant. And so that is, and there are certainly other things that libraries are doing and, and we're doing around climate action as well, in addition to the environmental sustainability work. Uh, in our libraries. And so those are just quick examples of things that, that are, are, are library programs that just fit beautifully under the uh, UN Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, next slide. And I think one of the things that's really important to remember around um, the public libraries and UN SDGs is that they can be an incredible advocacy tool. Our stakeholders, our elected officials, uh, certainly care about libraries and our library advocates, but there are many priorities that they care about. They care about climate, they care about hunger, they care about homelessness, um, immigrant integration, and other things. And so uh, being able to, to present the work of the library within the context of the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals can be a very, very helpful advocacy tool and elevate the public library and show that the public library is very much fundamentally tied into helping our cities, our counties, our communities, our state and provincial governments, national governments in uh, achieving uh, bigger, broader goals to improve the lives of our residents. And so uh, here is just uh, uh, an example of a launch of a new American center at our central library with uh, our, our now former mayor, Eric Garcetti, and the gentleman speaking is someone who became a United States citizen. Uh, his name is Sergio Sanchez from Veracruz, Mexico, became a U.S. citizen. His wife did as well uh, through the library services. So a reminder that advocacy is about storytelling. Uh, and then again, uh, the work of uh, libraries under SDGs is, is about uh, telling those stories and, uh, and using it as an effective uh, advocacy tool. And also to speak about how our service services impact the biggest issues that our communities face and how uh, library work is extremely relevant and essential uh, to uh, all of our stakeholders. And um, the, the SDGs are also a great way to promote your library, 
Uh, and I think Loida has also uh, made an excellent point about uh, libraries being able to be a model for other local organizations in terms of a tie in to uh, SDGs. And another strategy is to incorporate SDGs, uh, if, if not a framework for a strategic plan, but to uh, mention the work of, of your library in supporting SDGs within a, a, a strategic plan for the organization. I think that can be very, very effective as well. Uh, and in LA, I will say just with the chart and being able to talk about how the work of our public library and not just broadly the LA Public Library, but the work within our neighborhoods on the ground in our branch libraries and specific neighborhoods is tied to a global goal and a, and, and, and a set of UN goals is, uh, is very powerful, very effective, and a reminder of uh, how critical it is the work we do every day. And with that, uh, I thank you all so much for listening. It's a, a real honor to be able to participate in this uh, webinar today. And speaking of advocacy, uh, this photo uh, is just a, 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 a photos are advocacy as well. And it, it's a reminder of uh, how, uh, how important the work it is that we do. This is our, one, our book bike, which we carry out into the community and uh, a very adorable young patron. Thank you all. Thank you so much, John. Um, attendees, as you can see, we started with information from the region, North America. Then we went to the UN library and the work right at global level, good for all regions as well. Then we had the frame by Rebecca, amazing. And now we have these uh, local stories powerful examples. You can see how to apply this information and how uh, Los Angeles Public Library, in this case, uh, has successfully done this. And uh, we hope this is uh, motivational for you and encouraging. It's amazing. Thank you so much, John. Um, Los Angeles has been instrumental um, for development of some resources. Uh, that we will present in uh, five minutes. But now that we have some time, I will ask Magdalena Gomulka to please report on the interactive conversations, the breakout rooms that we had. And um, as you know, this information will be useful for uh, the IFA Congress and other communications. Magdalena. Yeah, uh, thank you, Loida. So uh, we organize four breakout rooms and we can start talking about uh, some highlights from the discussion uh, by uh, by my by the numbers we start from the moderator of the room number one uh, so um, Maria I hope that you are with us here so you have a few yeah minutes to, to, to present what was important in your discussion. Okay, thank you. I wanna to thank to all participants in these uh, break rooms for a great conversation and for sharing their experience. We all agree that uh, library associations hold a big role in SDG goals uh, promotion. Uh, and we have found out that a big number of uh, library associations do not have a strategic documents and we all agree that they uh, should have it. Uh, we also uh, uh, get some great projects worldwide connected with uh, SDG goals. So that was a uh, short uh, info about our break room. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Maria, for your work. And uh, moderator of the room number two, Paria. All right. So I think we also got almost the same results that a lot of well, we ran out of time for this question, but what we found out is that also most of the libraries don't have a special document for SDG. But when uh, one of the questions that we had in the form asked, like, could you say what content should be integrated into association strategic planning? So the suggestions were, you know, everything that is mentioned in the SDGs quality education, gender equality, decent work. So hopefully this will be helpful for some libraries when, who are looking at having special SDG documents. And as far as the projects that the libraries could be involved in, which are related to <clears throat> SDGs, sorry, I'm losing my voice. Um, 
it was again mentioned that there are only a few libraries who have distinct SDG policies or projects. That was my short report. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Paria. And uh, Borna? Yes, hello. Um, so basically the same as uh, what was mentioned in uh, the highlights from room number one and room number two. Uh, we also had a very nice and inspiring conversation. Uh, what I would like to mention, some of the um, highlights from our uh, discussion was that it was mentioned that um, a lot, lot of libraries already do uh, a lot of work and a lot of things that are uh, sustainable, uh, connected to sustainable uh, development goals. They just maybe need to uh, promote them a little bit better. Um, also, one interesting thing was that all kinds of projects that libraries do can be integrated into the work of the uh, SDG. And also, um, uh, public libraries in general, maybe. Uh, need a little bit more uh, connection and uh, better ties when working with the government. Yeah, thank you, Borna, uh, for your presentation and uh, some highlights from the discussion uh, with uh, group number four. So um, participants uh, in my discussion, uh, many of them, they are they are starting working on SDGs, so this webinar uh, is very important uh, to find out more uh, what libraries do for SDGs and how they can promote. Um, in the survey which uh, we used during our conversation and the second part uh, was about uh, some kind of pledges. Uh, what it means that uh, what can library we as a librarians can do, and uh, many responsibilities uh, mentioned that uh, it is important to uh, promote uh, SDGs and sustainable development goals in our projects, and also that there is. Um, crucial to uh, recognize the importance of information uh, information societies uh, for uh, the achieve, achievements of uh, sustainable development goals so it's quite possible to talk uh, and to cooperate with uh, local communities on sdgs as well as uh, governments and achieve uh, SDGs uh, together. So uh, there were a few highlights from our discussions and we will try to summarize uh, more uh, on our and and uh, send uh, our comment some our highlights to a moderator of uh, the webinar. So uh, that's it and uh, microphone. Uh, my microphone goes to, to Loida. Thank you so much to uh, the new professionals uh, from IFLA. They are uh, joining us today from different parts of the world in different regions. So thank you so much for your support. I also want to mention uh, from the group I, um, I joined that there is, uh, for instance, a sustainable well-being initiative in Canada. So if you, if the person who mentioned this please, uh, is still with us, please, uh, you can share a link on the chat. That sounds very interesting. Also, uh, from the Mortenson Center, there will be an information action brief on the SDGs. And I believe uh, Claire is still here uh, and is still to come. But if there is any link, please feel free to share on the chat. Uh, this is our webinar, right, from the North America. And then uh, the Canadian Federation also developed uh, uh, something where they included the SDGs in the strategic plan. And this was uh, mentioned as well uh, in my group. This is amazing. And we want to highlight these examples and everybody can learn from them. <clears throat> now we are going to the last section. And in this session, I'm going to be joined by Robin Keir. She is a member of the North American uh, IFA division and also uh, a member of the ALA uh, United Nations Sustainable Development Subcommittee. And we're going to talk about um, 
different things, including resources developed by um, ALA regarding uh, the SDGs. Robin. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for, for being here today. Uh, can you see my slides okay? Um, yes, maybe full. Yes. Full? Okay. Yes. Great. How's that? Is that better? Great. Okay, great. Thank you. I'm just going to put a link uh, in the chat to, to everything that, that Loida and I speak to today here is uh, available from this page from the American Library Association. So thank you for being here today and thank you for uh, the invitation for me to be able to share some of this uh, ALA activity. The ALA uh, UN SDGs Task Force was started in uh, January of 2020, and it was an initiative uh, spearheaded by our past president, Julius Jefferson, uh, whom you heard from today, This and also Loida Garcia-Pebo here. And it um, was approved by the uh, executive board of the association. And we had 10 members uh, from different kinds of libraries and also members from international ALA members from different parts of the world participating uh, in the work. Uh, as Rebecca said earlier, we were gathering like-minded individuals to, to advance this work. And Loida will talk a little bit more about the strategic planning uh, that, that the group did and, and where we'll be going in the future, but I'm going to speak to what we, what we did and what we put out um, over the time frame that we worked in. One of the first things that we completed, we felt was needed was a way to introduce the SDGs and what they are and what uh, a person can do in the library and what a library can do. So we, we came up with this one pager that we call it, the one page fact sheet. This is adaptable to the local environment as, as all of the materials that, that we created are. And as, as you heard from, from Rebecca, sometimes adapting to your local environment means not mentioning the UN necessarily. It doesn't mean that you're not working towards these goals. It just means that you're adapting to the message to, to your local environment and how you think that would best come across. But in this one pager, you know, we explain what they are, what the role of libraries is, and, and what, what you can do. The next major item that we, we worked on and completed was we felt that libraries needed something uh, besides the, the one page fact sheets to sort of adapt to, to their local area. So you heard John mention the library uh, chart, the chart and for, for public libraries. And so we made this kind of something that a, a local library could adapt to, to their own environment. So that chart, you could download the file, you could enter library projects, you could add your library logo and use the, the, um, the SDG images to adapt to, to what your library is doing for each of those goals. So it can be also used sort of as a strategic planning exercise, as well as something that could be public facing or something that you could use internally to say, okay, how, how are these goals important to us? How do we do already what these goals are asking uh, to create a better world? And how can we do more of that in the future? Uh, a second downloadable item that you can find there are creating your own posters, right? Creating large poster files. And then another item that we felt was entirely appropriate for libraries were the uh, SDG bookmarks. So these are things that we love to put out bookmarks in our libraries. Uh, so you can put these out. A quick reminder of, you know, of, of how you want to adapt this to your environment again, but what an, S, what an SDG is, what a goal is, and, and what the library is doing, doing in that realm. So, John, you already saw this. I won't talk too much about this, but this was the one that uh, John worked from for Los Angeles Public Library. I'll go right to the uh, academic library chart. So this is one that, that I helped to, to develop with the other academic uh, 
librarian on the task force. And this is really thinking about sustainable efforts on an academic campus, thinking about how to organize research efforts around these sustainable development goals. I'll say that academic environments really do think about these goals in their research, um, especially schools related to government and urban planning and public service. And so in, a, in my environment, faculty are thinking about this. And so it's important for the library to be a place where that research can be organized and, and quantified for our campus uh, sustainability efforts. So this, this is um, a chart that you can see an example there. And this is something, of course, that you could adapt to your own environment. Uh, we also completed uh, five webinars during our time to promote the efforts internationally. You can see we participated uh, in various, the, the members, participated differently with the uh, Philippines and with Germany, but also we completed a webinar for the American Library Association annual conference as well. So we were bringing this to people in a couple of these webinars uh, in the US to, to, promote, um, to promote these efforts. So the last thing I wanna mention, of course, is that IFLA helped the IFLA materials helped, and so we do link back to IFLA resources in on the page. And as a reminder, we're all we're halfway there, right? So these goals came out in 2015. We're halfway there to the 2030 agenda, and um, you know we all want to achieve as much uh, positive development as we can in that time frame. And so you know that's really what we're what we're doing to um, is to help that. So. Okay, Lloyd, are you ready? Yes. Okay, thank great. you, Robin. Um, yes, and so the purpose of the uh, task force was also to develop a multi-year strategic plan. And um, the team were to um, put on, on paper, right, opportunities for the US Library Associations because ALA wants to work with the other associations in the country and also for the different ALA divisions and that many of you know that divisions are um, library associations in itself. We have the Public Library Association, the um, Association of College and Research Libraries, the American Association of School Libraries, and so on, and, and roundtables uh, such as the Sustainable Roundtable. And um, we came up also with recommendations for engagement, um, different uh, things, for instance, workshops, summits, conference, different things. Let's let's go into that, um, Robin. Next. And um, here are the main parts of that uh, strategic plan. These slides will be available along with the uh, recording, so you can go over this again. Uh, but it's an example of how a library association, in this case, uh, a little bit uh, complex and large, like ALA. Um, has worked to include and sort of embed the SDGs in their strategies. And I hope this is motivational for all types of uh, library associations. We want to increase the participation by libraries in these efforts to achieve the SDGs, uh, awareness of the SDGs on all types of libraries. That's why we developed this chart that um, academic public school libraries can uh, fill out and share with the community. And also, as John mentioned, uh, share with the uh, local elected officials to advocate for libraries. We want to also increase the uh, library associations um, engagement in the SDG efforts and also increase the awareness of the SDGs within the library association. As you know, library associations have these divisions, chapters, uh, different bodies that uh, make the association. We want everyone to be involved and also consolidate the efforts in one place. And, you know, that's a bit, uh, that's a really ambitious goal since uh, it's a complex association with many moving parts, but we are working towards that. And uh, we want to also work so we have stories from the US in the EFLAX library map of the world. And that's, we still have to do some work in that area is part of our uh, strategy. And um, 
uh, the resources that Robbie mentioned, the one pager, the many downloadables, and we hope that in the future there are more courses, but uh, this is an effort uh, across the association, and you mentioned, you know that Rebecca mentioned there is a course, so there are many uh, components to this strategy, and we have the webinar recordings, and there will be more as we move forward, we are still um, in the middle, right, uh, towards 2030. And we are also looking into how to measure this results. So there is uh, data that we can use in the future, perhaps um, help other initiatives as well. We can model after this. Next. And here we have now uh, the work of the ALA uh, United Nations 2030 Sustainable Development Goals uh, Task Force now um, has morphed, so to speak, into the ALA uh, IRC United Nations SDG Subcommittee. And we have the members here. These are experts in different areas. And it's important for us that we have these experts because they will make the work uh, stronger and will allow us to be active in different arenas, uh, perhaps to join IFLA efforts on library advocacy at the United Nations. Sometimes there are experts that are needed, there are hands, right, uh, to attend different events and collaborate. And so we have Sarah Benson from Copyright, Zina George, she is from uh, Public Library here in New York Public Library, Robin Keir, she's from Academic Library, she's the um, a president of the Library Senate. So that's a very uh, unique expertise. Um, I should say president of a university faculty Senate. And so that's a, a bit very special expertise. We have Boyun Kim, everything related to artificial intelligence, technology. John Zabo, you just heard him. Uh, and so it also, he also brings not only public libraries, but that piece on library advocacy with the local government. That's very important. We all have to go through that, even if we are in academic libraries. And then uh, Stephen Yates, Dr. Stephen Yates, he comes from school libraries. And we have the ALA staff that are coming from the International Relations uh, Office, Michael Dolling and Delin Guerra, and myself, that I have been involved in advocating um, in the United Nations since 2014, uh, since the uh, working group that established the um, SDGs. And so we are very happy and um, looking forward to work with everyone, not only in the US, but Canada as well, in, in other regions. Next. And uh, here is the charge of the subcommittee to collaborate with everyone, divisions, round tables, everyone um, to, to implement this multi-year strategic plan. Next slide. Currently, uh, we have and we are collaborating with ALA's Public Library Association. And so the SDGs are being integrated in different efforts. And uh, this is for an online event. Okay, this is for an online event that will be very helpful for uh, public libraries, and so stay tuned. And um, we recently uh, were at the United Nations um, third Open Science Conference that um, Thanos, the director of the United Nations Library, mentioned. Um, I was able to moderate one of the sections, and we are in collaboration with IFLA as well. Um, and we have just started. So um, this is an example of what the Library Association can do. And we are very happy to share any information with um, any of the library associations around the world. Next, I think we got to the end of our presentation. That's us. Feel free to contact us. Thank you. And uh, we are at the end of our event as well. And um, we want to thank everyone involved in this event. Uh, from the um, MLAS chair, Harold Lucker, to the working group of MLAS, the um, representative from NSULIB and IFLA, uh, from the chair, Harry, as well. Um, the chair, uh, Julius Jefferson, from the North America Division, 
and uh, the vice chair, the members, everyone supporting this event, and also uh, the convener, Magdalena Gomulka from the New Professionals and the amazing team. You met them all. Uh, thank you so much. The recording will be available very soon, and there are other communications that will come out from this webinar. This is the first one. And now I would like to share um, my uh, screen because we have a really nice surprise, and it's about the next webinar. The next webinar will feature, um, let's see if we do this. Oh, yes. Asia and Oceania, and we are very excited. It's a big region. Uh, there are many things happening there with library associations. So follow us, stay tuned to IFLA uh, list and also um, MLAS on Twitter and Facebook for more news. And we hope to announce the date for the webinar with Asia and Oceania very soon. Thank you very much and uh, look out for more information soon.